All right, guys, today we got our last conic section called the hyperbola. The hyperbola is kind of like a backwards ellipse. And there's a picture. You can see the pictures down there. Think about think about doing this before I read that definition to you. But think about taking these two curves right here and just flipping them over. And if you did that, it would look just like an ellipse. It's really just a backward, taking half of an ellipse and turning it the other way. Anyway, here's the official definition. Now, hyperbola is a set of all points in a plane. It means it's flat. For the absolute value of the difference of the distances from two fixed points, the foci, is constant. The midpoint of the foci, the two foci is the center. So there would be the center. Here's your two foci. If you found the distance from there to any point, like if you pick any point on the hyperbola and go the distance from there to there and add them up, oh, sorry, and subtract them, it would be the same. Okay, same thing. So I picked that one and went to save, pick that point right there. I went to that foci, focus, and that focus subtracted the difference get the same exact number. Okay, standard equation, just a tad bit different from a, um, an ellipse. Yesterday in our equation of ellipse, we had x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. Um, this time it's minus, that's the difference, there's a minus sign in the middle. Still equals one, still a fraction, still have vertices, still have foci. Oh, one other thing, the foci are found differently. Uh, it looks just like Pythagorean theorem today. C squared is a squared plus b squared. One other weird thing. Whatever term is positive, if the x is positive or the y is positive, that's the major axis today. Not the one that's bigger, but the one that's positive. And that's going to be the one that comes first, to be honest with you. The one that's first and positive is going to be the major. So if the x is the major one, it's going to open sideways like this. If the y is positive, it's going to go to open down just like that. All right, let's look at one here. It says there's your equation find the vertices foci and asymptotes then graph so i need to equal one so what i'm going to do first is divide everything up there by 144 the 9x squared by 144 the 16y squared by 144 that's a y squared and the 144 by 144 everything by 144 9 goes into 144 16 times 16 goes into 9 times then and that's one okay so here's what i know because my x is first it's the major axis and by the way um the major axis in hyperbola is actually called the transverse axis instead of major. So you're gonna you might see that in your book. Like, what's the transverse axis? It's the major one. Okay, so the vertex, sorry, the center, uh, because there's no parentheses, is zero zero. The vertices are gonna be your, on your major axis and they're gonna be that far away from the center. So because it's 16, the vertices are gonna be at plus or minus four. Your foci. To find the foci, you got to do your c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So I'm doing 16 plus 9, which is 25. Everybody knows square 25 is plus or minus 5. They're always on your major axis, so they're going to be the x. So if I draw that graph, I'm going to come here. Let me change colors a little bit. I'm going to go 4 away on the x, 4 away on the x. Um, really and truly to figure out how... Um, Notice it does say asymptotes. We haven't talked about anything about the asymptotes yet. I'm going to go ahead and go three away on the y, three away on the y. I'm going to draw a box, okay, a little, little rectangle right here, which is not actually the hyperbola, but here's the deal. I'm going to connect the corners of those box, of that box with what are called asymptotes. Now, don't, what the asymptotes do basically is tell me how fat or skinny the um, hyperbola is, and because this x was the major, it's going to open this way. I, and what happens is your hyperbola get closer and closer to the asymptotes, but we'll never touch it. Um, so the asymptotes are going to be this. It's going to be y equals, and I'm just going to count rise over run. I, ra I rose 3, ran 4, so it's 3 fourths x. The y-intercept is 0. It crosses y at the 0 right there, so the y-intercept is 0. And because there's two of them going opposite directions, it's really plus or minus 3 fourths x. So there's the asymptote. There's your foci. There's your vertices. There's your center. All right, so really the only new thing from yesterday is are the um, asymptotes that you need to find. Okay, an example one. Find an equation of hyperbola with vertices, negative four, four, and four, and those two foci. Okay, when they ask you to find the equation, the key there is always use what they give you. Take what they give you, use that. First of all, notice the vertices are zero, four, and zero, negative four, and those are on the y-axis, which means the y comes first, the x comes second, because the vertices are always on the major axis. Also, the foci are on the major, and they, they come next. So that's why I did that. Also, I know there's, there's there's no parentheses on the top or the numerators because halfway between negative 4 and positive 4 is 0, so the center is 0, 0. And because we're 4 away from the center, that's 16, and that's a squared. Now, to find the b squared, it goes under the x squared. I'm going to take the foci, which is c. Okay, so because I see the 6s, that means c is 6. 
So I know c is 6, really plus or minus 6, which means c squared is 36. So here's what I know. I know, I know c squared equals a squared plus b squared. If I move that 16 over, I get 20. There's my b squared. I don't care about the b. I just need b squared because that's what goes in my equation. And there it is. There's your equation. So just use what they give you. And you can find it. Last slide. That's a doozy. Um, let's take the, we got to make that equation look like it's supposed to. So the y squared is positive. So I'm going to put the y squared first. Put the y's first, what I'm trying to say. i put the x is second. And the 28 is going to the other side. Okay, now I'm going to complete the square. So first of all, I've got to factor out that 4. I can't complete the square with the 4 there. Um, I'm going to complete the square here, but watch what happens. If I take out that negative, that makes that 4x become negative, which is important. All right, now I'm going to complete the square. Half of 6, half of the 6 is 3 squared. That's 9. Now, this is weird. I wrote a 9. It's not really 9. It's really 9 times the 4 in the front, which is 36. So I'm going to put a 36 on this side. Complete the square here. Half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. However, there's a minus sign in front of that parenthesis. So really just added a negative 4, so be careful there. So here's what I've got. i got a 4, a y plus 3 squared, an x minus 2 squared, and that equals, if I add all that up over there, it equals 4. Now I want it to equal 1, so I'm going to divide everything by 4. So I get my, my 1 over here, so I get 1. Over here, the 4s cancel. I get y plus 3 squared over 1. Here, nothing cancel. I didn't mean to put an x squared there. x minus 2 squared over 4. And now once I get that, now I can write my answer. So I start with the center. The center is the parentheses. So don't get it backwards here. The x comes first. 2, negative 3 is my center. My vertices are going to be on my y-axis because it comes first. And it's going to be 1 away from the center. So I'm going to go 1 away. So if I go to 2, negative 3, which is the center, 2, negative three right there, that's the center. If I go one away up and one away down, those are my vertices, which would be at two, uh, negative two, and also two, negative four. So one away both both directions. I also gotta find the foci. Foci is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. I'm sorry, a squared plus b squared, one plus four, which is five. So it'd be plus or minus squared of five, but that's how far away it's from the center. And there's the center. And because they're on the major, I'm going to add it to the negative 3. So I'm going to negative 3 plus or minus square root of 5. That, that right there represents um, where your foci would be. All right, now I'm going to draw my rectangle. i got to go 2 left to there and 2 right to there. Draw my little box, which would do this. Okay, now I can draw my asymptotes just like that. And because the y comes first, um, the vertex will be there. You go boom. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. Now your asymptotes, you would say y equals plus or minus, and uh, what's the slope there? So if I rose one, ran two, plus or minus one half x. That's good enough for me right now. Uh, really, there's a y or stuff there, but I'm going to be fine with you. Just tell me the slope of the asymptotes for now, and we'll be good. All right. If you understood that last one, you got the whole lesson. If you didn't, you still got a bunch of it, so you're in good shape. We'll work it out tomorrow. You'll be good. Time you leave. Hope you've enjoyed Conic Sessions. They're awesome. See you tomorrow.